be a co-host now. You're going to stick to co-host. Oh, I'm excited. You don't have to do any more work, girl. You just show up. You get to co-host. Be your beautiful self weighing on some topics, and you're out. You don't have to do all the editing anymore. I, I can't believe it. Even though, you know, that's like my tried and true. So if you ever needed any editing, I would be here. Oh, well, believe me, I'm sure I'll be calling you. I feel like there's still, like, unresolved things we have to get done. Like, I don't know, new iTunes logo. <laughs> like, I need to get back to you on eight projects that we uh, are outstanding. But, yeah, mine is that. Mine is that. Uh, Welcome, of course, to the Sarah Fraser Show, formerly the Hey Fraser Podcast. Um, I've been telling you every single day on every show because some of you listen on different days. Of course, the show is going through a transformation. We're getting a new name because nobody can say Hey Fraser. Everybody says Hey Fraser, Hey Fraser. So October 1st is like the official day where we will no longer be referring to it as Hey Fraser. I'm sure once in a while I'll be telling you, oh, just a reminder, it was Hey Fraser. Now it's TSFS. Come on in, that's some funny shit, all right? So, anyway, welcome to the show. AJ is back. She's joining us on Wednesdays, our girl. Um, Always so much fun. And now she doesn't have to do editing behind the scenes, so even better. Even better, which means I'll just be out on the streets, COVID safe, getting some good content for you guys. Okay, okay. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Maybe we ought to pause on the COVID (laughs) safe. You're right. We'll talk about, we reunited for a lunch, which was hysterical with Schmiggy and Schman. We brought our men. We're going to talk about that. Also, I have a surprise listener email from you. And you guys know I'm becoming the dick spurt. So this guy is a 28-year-old virgin who has a dilemma. And he wants to know if he should put this on his social media, all of his social media platforms to sort of give women a heads up and what we think about this. I love this question. It's so juicy. Hmm. Um, Teddy Mellencamp apparently found out through the press that she's fired from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So we'll talk all about that. That's cool. one way to get fired. Is that isn't that suck when like they don't even call you first because it was leaked? It's savage. I don't know what the Real Housewives. They're going through. A, they're not only is twenty twenty a, a savage year, but Real Housewives is coming for a lot of housewives. All the housewives are gone. They're going to do a whole redo. And, but honestly, I, you're not that into housewives, right? Or or you kind of are. I kind of am. It's just it's so much to handle for me, and I feel like I'm already so behind. I know all the players. It's just I miss some of the drama. Like if I miss an episode, I feel like I've missed so much, and then I get very overwhelmed. There's like 15 franchises. Oh my now God. they're coming out with what is it, Salt Lake City? I'm like another one. Oh, I can't wait for the Mormons. I'm the super Mormons for the Mormons. Um, it's so funny. Now I feel the opposite about the show that I could actually skip till the last episode of the season and know exactly what happened because here's what happens: they fight, mm. they go to lunch, they make up. And then over, to, and they fight about the dumbest thing. You know, if some threesome, why didn't you tell us you had a threesome? It's it's like the stupidest drama, so you can totally follow along. Anyway, we'll we'll talk more about that. If you are on Facebook right now, share the show. Um, the Sarah Fraser Show is live on Twitch, on YouTube, on Twitter, and on Facebook. Facebook, you can have a join party, so share it with someone who has never heard of the show. Um, I want to thank some sponsors, and then we'll get into these stories and more. RNG Insurance, you guys are amazing. You've been calling our guy David Gore who is fantastic. David Gorman and Charitz, he's the best. He's known for saving you money on auto insurance. They work with like 30 states across the country. So a lot of you listen to us down in Florida. You listen to us in California, in New York. They cover all those states, Delaware, DC, North Carolina, South Carolina, many, many more. Um, go to R and G, R A N D G insurance.com. By the way, David Gorman and Dr. Will, both of our clients teamed up and they're doing a giveaway, an MCM purse, which I just got, AJ, to my house. It is is, gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And it's way bigger than what you think. Like it's huge. It's a cross body. It's like adorable and then becomes a clutch. It's okay. Fantastic. Because at first we were thinking about getting a wallet and I'm like, this is not we need something bigger. <laughs> no, this is like, you're going to want this. So we draw a winner a week from today. It is totally free to enter. Go to the Sarah Fraser show on Instagram. You're going to have to follow David, follow Dr. Will. There's a few instructions, but it's super easy. We're also doing a second chance prize when you share this image on your IG story of a $50 gift card to our friends at Bloomingdale's who we love. Don't miss it. This giveaway is a blowout. All your favorite coffee items too for fall. AJ like custom picked all the thermal like mugs. I, there's like 10,000 mugs. You'll never be without a mug if you win this. <laughs> and we've got metal straws. I put vital protein collagen powder because that's what the Kardashians use. And apparently their skin looks fantastic. And La Colombe. 
because it's freaking delicious. The ice lattes that they're coming in like a big pack. So you guys can just put them right in your fridge. It's so great. So anyway, that is there. Um, also, we want to welcome a new sponsor. If you're in the market for photography, you need a photographer that you can trust. Well, we absolutely love our new friend, Barry Harley. Barry Harley is a DC based architectural photographer who specializes in creating imagery for commercial, residential, and hospitality clients in both the US and abroad. Barry is a Marriott approved photographer and a recent recipient of the 2020 Communication Arts Award of Excellence. You can schedule your shoot today, barryharley.com. Barry is a friend of mine who I actually met through Paul and I adore. He does beautiful photography. You can see his stuff if you want to just check out his work before you book him. Barry Harley on Instagram, but Barry Harley, barryharley.com is a, that's like a tough name, isn't it? <laughs> it is like, oh my God. Barry Harley. Barry Harley, baby. You can check it website out, barryharley.com. Um, and then later on the show, Act on Addiction. I love supporting this organization, but addiction is so prevalent right now and people have been hit so hard through COVID. So Dr. Clark is going to be with us who works with the organization to talk about if you're, if you're battling a substance use disorder or you know somebody that is, they have so many free resources. So what you can do this month. Um, all right, age, where should we, uh, there's so many great things to start with. First of all, I want to just start with this because I was obsessed with this woman. Do you follow Real Housewives of New uh, Real Housewives? Um, Real Humans of New York. Yes, yes. Oh, we used to talk about we used to talk about the funny lady that Tangeray. Yes. Okay. So Tangeray now has a series out on Humans of New York, but I got to tell you, it sounds like her health has taken a turn for the worse, and it is not good news. So Wait, what? Okay, if you guys don't remember this, I'm going to say maybe like three or four months ago, this woman that was featured on Humans of New York. Okay, here she is, right? Legendary. She went viral. I mean, Jennifer, like everybody, Jennifer Lewis, like all these celebrities started following her, wanting to know more. She was a prostitute back in the 70s. I don't think she was, was she? I thought she did. She did costume design. No, she's a stripper. She was a stripper, prostitute, and then she tells a story where she there was a president of the United States who just wanted to hire prostitutes and eat them out, and they wanted to book her, but she refused to do it. Oh, yeah. These stories are they're great. Oh, I've, Have I've, you read these? I've seemed to have forgotten Tanqueray's story because I really remember it totally differently. I did not remember she was a stripper. I thought she was like, because this Punani is too good. And then she was saying that she never slept with anybody. No, she, well, I think that might be true. She may have never actually had sex with people. She might've just been a stripper. I, although I think she did talk about having sex with certain people, but she talks about how um, a Hasidic rabbi one night picked her up or tried to pick her up because he thought that she right. was transgender and she was like, baby, this is real fish. Yes. Like she has famous lines, right? So, and, you know, they were going to tell her extended story over a podcast. Well, and right. I kind of rolled our eyes. We're like, of course, of course, like, because I thought do a documentary about her, right? I think so too. I think she's the perfect person for a documentary. She's the perfect person. Do a documentary. Don't you want to see like behind the scenes where she yeah. lived used to war pictures, right? All about her past. Anyway, no, they were going to do, they were going to do a podcast. Well, her health has taken a turn for the worse. If you go to, um, humans of New York, they're actually doing a fundraiser for her. So she can, you know, basically live the rest of her life with some sort of health care. And they're going to tell more of her story over a series of 30 posts on the Instagram humans. Of wow. New York. Okay. So that's what you mean by series. It's just going to, it's an ongoing story post. Yeah, I got it. I think they should make, yeah, like sort of a documentary style and make it like an IGTV or something that just longer form. I feel like a post isn't enough. 10. Okay. So already there's the 10th story of 32 stories that is going up. Um, and this one starts about, you know, one of uh, my best customers was a go-go dancer named Vicky. Um, anyway, cause I think she did become, I think you are right. She became a costume designer later in life. Okay. You're going to have to read the story again. Cause if we're getting this all wrong, <laughs> no, I, I remember, I remember her as a costume designer. I remember that she had a whole thing. She, well, her stripper name was Tangeray. That's how she got it. Anyway, okay, maybe I got to go back and read this. She's a jack of all trades. Like she does everything. So I just wanted to give that update because if you follow that account and, and look, you can get the complete story. They're doing 32 posts. So let me tell you, if wow. there's a discrepancy, if we're wrong about the story, yeah. you can get it all right. Okay. There's yeah, that's a lot. 
frames to read. So there you go. Um, Teddy Mellencamp says that she found out she was fired from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, basically like all the same time that we did, because someone in the production team leaked the fact that they were telling her this week she was not coming back. She had no idea. Bravo calls her the next day and says, oh, by the way, thanks, but uh, you're not coming back. I did see her Instagram post where she was... <laughs> She wasn't crying, but she was kind of just telling the world what happened, basically, which is sad to me. I don't know. Did you think she was that stale? Because Bravo's been saying she was stale for the past couple months or whatever, or seasons. Well, the rumor is, according to this production leak, that yes, they were going to let her go last year, but they wanted to give her one more chance. They found her <sighs> boring. Um, I got to say, I I didn't think it was all that compelling. I really didn't. Like, I, I like her a lot. And I think she's a great friend on the show, you know, that shows up or you go to her house for a party. But I just, it's not like the same drama as Denise, you know, or Lisa Renna. I was going to say, no one has the same drama as Denise. Denise didn't even want that type of drama. Okay. Denise, Denise didn't even want that excitement. Denise no. been here for it. And Denise, by the way, also gone from the show. And she's gone. But that was on her own. She didn't want to be on the show anymore. Right. Right. She quit. Right. I think Teddy, well, Teddy, to me, Teddy is stunning. And I just like watching her because she's gorgeous and she is just like the hostess with the mostess. Well, I talked about this yesterday on the podcast, but you know, her all in program, which is like kind of a diet accountability program is mm -hmm. getting a ton of backlash because when you start, she limits you to 500 calories a day. What? No, that's not even a biscuit. I know. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? I eat 500 calories in my coffee every morning. What? 500 calories is like a bowl of cereal. Thank you. So she she wants you to kickstart apparently for a week. I don't do any, I was saying this yesterday on the show. I don't do any diets anymore. I don't do Weight Watchers, no. I don't, WW as they call it. I don't do any, I never count calories. I don't have a tracker. I don't have an Apple watch that counts your calories. I, I couldn't even tell you how many fucking t steps I've taken in the past three months. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so she's gone from the show. I, I think they can do better. I think they can do better. Well, I mean, yes, obviously. Now, I always think that it's like a friend of a friend, and that's how they get connections. It's or, not. Well. It's not. You think they really just like scout out different people? And then I know the women, a lot of the time, are forced to be friends. Like, they're not actually friends. Exactly. Well, Leah McSweeney from Real Housewives of New York. So right. in the reunions, you actually find out Leah was a suggestion by somebody in the production staff and Bethany Frankel. But they frame it as though she's friends with Tinsley. Well, they became friends after they started shooting, but they after were the never friends at first. Um, I think they need a Leah McSweeney on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I think they need a younger mom that has money. And I actually hear that they're thinking about a well-known podcaster out there, like a mommy podcaster, which would be that awesome for the podcasting world. Oh, that's true. Oh, you, you just want to be on. You're like... Cast a podcaster. Guess what? Me. If they start casting one podcaster, then you know they'll cast two. I was just on Instagram yesterday and I caught Bethany Frankel's IG live and she was announcing her new podcast. Oh, yes. What's it called? I, I, I just looked it up. It's called Just Be. Just Be. Okay. And what's it going to be just about? Be. Just her I, life. She was explaining and she says it's very business focused. So she's going to have tastemakers in the industry talking about how they made it in their industry. But because she's such a good businesswoman, I think, I think that's a great way for her to go. I sh yeah, she's like, I don't want it to be surface combos. I really want to get to the meat of stuff and talk business. I was like, okay. You know what? I actually think that's going to be super successful for her because I've said this before, but when yeah. she said her talk show, the Bethany Frankel talk show, yes. her strength is so much like being on a shark tank, like advising yes. women in business because she struggled so much. You guys remember when she joined Real Housewives of New York, she had no money. She lived in a tiny studio. That's she insane to me. Right? She was like a big hustler, but she had no cash. And then she parlayed that show into, of course, Skinny Girl and marketing it. And she was the first housewife to do that, to have like a whole line of brand stuff. And then every scene that they would shoot, she would make sure that all her Skinny Girl stuff was in it. And then boom, it took off. Genius. And we tried Skinny Girl one time and it just like wasn't for us. But, <laughs> but I love the product placement, Bethany. Seriously. I'd be curious if you're in the chat. Have you tried Skinny Girl products? Do you like them? Maybe it's me because uh, I'm super fussy. I cannot drink the Skinny Girl margarita. I think is the worst shit I've ever. Like I'd actually rather not drink alcohol. But maybe that. But I'm really a fussy bitch, so I don't know. 
like yeah, you have your tropical fish syndrome. I guess I tried it when you had it in your apartment and it was like years old. So no wonder it tasted kind of stale. I was like, when was the last time you used this bottle? <laughs> I swear to you, the first time I met Sarah and I went to her apartment, that bottle was there. The last time I was there when we were interviewing Danny, the start, it was March, the beginning of the pandemic. That bottle was still there. <laughs> we used it for every prop. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I, there ain't no way in hell I'm drinking this shit. So I'm gonna use this for a prop. I always use it for props. I've tried her granola bars. I don't. I don't like any of it. I don't the like granola. Isn't good. I, okay, you never really did diets. You never did slim fast. You never did these things. But like slim fast, they all had like diet bars, and they taste like that. It's like this protein. Oh, okay. Like, I'm just not into it. I guess nobody's tried it. I don't see anybody. Uh, people are just talking about Denise Richards. They say Teddy Mellencamp is uh, boring. Um, anyway, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't even think that she ended up selling Skinny Girl, so it doesn't matter because it's like. Oh, it's still selling. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So I hope one day we're going to get to the product placement because we've talked about products for a long time, you and I. Uh, yeah, we have, but I'm trying to think of what product isn't saturated. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, can we come out with another makeup palette line? Like, everybody oh, has makeup. That, no, that's just not us. We never talk makeup. <laughs> you know, we never talk makeup. I'm never doing my own makeup, but neither no. do Kylie Jenner. Was that like, one is so? She's the OG, though, not the OG, but she's like the epitome of what you would think would do a makeup line, I think. Well, I think you have resources to so many makeup artists that, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, even if yep. you don't do your own, it's such a part of who you are and your image that it was a natural fit, right? I mean, I don't know what I could launch. A flannel line, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, that's the thing. Like, uh, Fraser okay. flannels. I mean, that's like where I'm at, I think. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fraser flannels. Maybe some, maybe some like bed sheet line. Um, what like, else do you love? I see myself doing a fucking collaboration with LL Bean. Like, I mean, yes. Oh, yes, that's true. amazing. You guys, nice. I've got my own pair of duck boots out here. I mean, like, you know, I mean, like, what? That's what I'm going to be doing. Yeah, flannels, some uh, three quarter zip jackets. <laughs> One quarter zip, the ones at three. But I mean, I guess you could do your own cheese or, so, you know, you, you're you into like cheeses more. I don't really like food anymore, you know? So I'm trying to think of what I enjoy. Handbags, I guess. You know? You, yes. Oh my God. Duh. Hello. The really intricate shape bags. You know, the, what do what you call them? Clutches. Not <laughs> a novelty clutch. And it's like, you know, a pack of cigarettes that's also like, that also is like a, a clutch. Like a, a novelty clutch age. I'm like, yes. Now, what's my favorite one? Judith Lib Libri. Judith, uh, she does like the dollar bills. <gasps> yes. Oh my God. They're all um, like sweet dazzled. Yes. They're yes, amazing. Yes. Those are really, really good. And she'll do like a whole thing of popcorn and it's multiple colors. I love those. Now I wanted to get you, it's Judith Lieber is what I'm thinking about. I wanted to get you one, but they usually go for $4,000. Well, when we're rich, <laughs> we'll get for each other. That's when um, I know I've made it is when I can afford you like the most, oh my God, look. Okay. I'm sharing one and that's it. I can't wait. I love those bags so much. Well, I've already thought of my company. It's going to be called cock and clutch and I'm going to have a cocktail ring line and cock and clutches. Cock and clutch. <laughs> that's genius. Why are you giving that away? Elsie see that right now. Not mentioning, delete that part. Cock and clutch by oh, wait. Sarah Frazier. It's cocktail rings and clutches. Got it. Because, well, yes, yes. When I mean, you don't have a single martini glass in your apartment, but yes, I love the idea. No, no, cocktail rings. You know how I have all those big rings that like are a big flower or they're a yes. um, jewel or they're like, you know, they're like a cocktail. They call it a cocktail ring. Got so, you. I was thinking it was one of the, it's your little name tag on each of your cocktails to tell yeah. which one. You should do that too. Cock and clutch. This is, uh, by the way, I want that handbag. That was amazing. Wasn't it? Yes. Yes. Incredible. It's, beer. it's like a beer, right? I love it. Um, yes. Just a reminder, at 10.50-ish, we're going to have Dr. Clark on from Act On Addiction. So if someone in your life is battling addiction, you definitely are going to want to hear this because Act On Addiction offers so many free resources. And if you have a question about maybe a friend that's going through it, um, a family member, he is available and you can drop a question in our live chat because we are live right now on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and on Twitter. All right. I want to hit like a couple other things really quick and then talk about our brunch together. So you saw where Vanessa Bryant is no longer speaking to her mom after she did a Telemundo interview, essentially saying that the two are estranged. Yes. Um, yeah. This is like so sad, basically. 
it's sad to find out that Vanessa has been supporting her mother for the past 20 years. It's it's almost as if she the mother was using her. No, it is like that. She was using her daughter for financial stability. I know. And so uh, ale- Vanessa alleges that the mom even moved out all the furniture that Kobe Bryant and Vanessa Bryant bought her from the house, hid everything to make it look as though that Vanessa had kicked her out when Vanessa still, even though they're estranged, apparently financially supports her. It's such a sad story. And that's on toxic relationships. They need to go to therapy together. I know. But don't you hate to see this? Like they've gone through such tragedy, right? You lose your 13 or 14 year old daughter and your husband in a helicopter crash one morning, 10 a.m. You know, you're just getting your day going. That... That was a moment like when Michael Jackson died, when Whitney, he, he was just like, you knew where you were when they, when that wasn't announced. And then now her own family fighting. It's so sad to see that. It's sad because your mom is supposed to be the most supportive person in your life. And especially when you're going through a tough time, it's, it's like, this is her time to come out and be that supportive person. And um, it's the complete opposite. And now she's going on these Spanish television outlets talking trash. I just... About her daughter, yeah, and Kobe. It's really, really sad. I know. I, I I don't know if the mom is being paid. Maybe that's why she's doing it. Um, Alexandra says Vanessa's mom is so wrong. No matter what the story is, you don't go and give an interview and talk about personal issues that you're having with your daughter. I I agree. And you would think, like going through a tragedy like that, just in January, they'd all go to therapy together. Uh, you know, it's hard to you know judge somebody else's situation when you're going through that. But why the mom would do that? Oh, very, very sad. Um, I always love your Wendy Williams impression. Wendy Williams, her show came back this week. She's lost 25 pounds and she says she's getting a breast reduction. You, let me tell you this. You know, I'm having fun. Okay. I come out here in a neon yellow <laughs> whole entire get up. Okay. I got a long skirt. I'm having fun. What? I lost 25 pounds. And these jugs, okay, they have threw my back out. Okay, it's like it's a lot for me to handle. I'm getting them removed, and I don't care what you say. How you, How you doing? doing? <laughs> I love Wendy so much. She says they weigh three pounds each. That must be. Can you imagine carrying around six pounds of titties? Oh my Hell god! No. When I go to get melons at the store, I'm like, oh, this is too much. But I always thought they were fake. I think I, I, they have to be AJ. They've got to be. They have to be fake. Okay, see, Absolutely. look at look at the one on the right. She looks like Jessica Rabbit. So she must be going to have her implants taken out or at least reduced. Oh, my God. I mean, doesn't that look painful? So oh. painful. Her tiny little frame cannot support that. Lost 25 pounds. She said at first with quarantine, she was depressed. She was eating a ton. We but- saw. <laughs> yeah. And then she got tired of that. She So she stopped really eating, ate healthy, and now she wants to get a breast reduction too. I mean, that makes sense. She was on every single day going live when her show was off, just eating lamb chops. Oh, my God. And when she would light up her um, Slim Jim, she'd open up a Slim Jim. <laughs> she'd snap on a lighter and warm it up and then suck on that Slim Jim. I was like, girl, what? I had oh. never seen that in my life. And you guys know I frequent the Slim Jims, sadly. I need to get off. I need to weed myself off of the Slim Jims. Oh, my God. I, I don't even know if you could hold me down to eat a Slim Jim. Again, see, what 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 product line am I going to eat? Dan and I eat, you know... Uh, uh, Pea milk. That's what mean we- like a bird. Hey, everybody. I've come out with a new line of oat milk. <laughs> like, for, like, that's $7 a gallon. Like, who's actually? Buy it? Yeah, you should do a really cool vegan, um, like, minimalistic dinner set that, like, only vegans would like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, a, what an incredible market that's going to be at. Very niche, I tell you. We love the niche. <laughs> really? We're looking for a niche, but that's, like, hyper niche, okay? <laughs> Hyper niche. Hyper niche oh is God. in, Sarah. Hyper niche is in. Um, all right. I want to talk about our brunch. Then we'll have Dr. Clark on. And then I want to end the show with a, with a poor gentleman who's 28 years old, alleges that he's a virgin, and he wants to know if he should start putting this on his dating profile. So we're, we're definitely going to help him out. But after how many months? We hadn't seen each other since March? March. That was the last time. March. We got together on Sunday at this great spot out in her. <laughs> Out in her Di- shout, yeah. out to shout out to her in Virginia. If you've ever been there, you wouldn't know that you were there because uh, if you blink twice, you pass it. What what possessed you to <laughs> go to some shack on the side of the road? You know, I'm used to going to brunch with you. We go downtown DC, we get served mimosas, like it's complimentary. We show up here, the milk was curdled. I didn't even <laughs> know up from down. I stop here, I go, is this? The, 
is this what is this what you, you, you were you were literally taking your fork and like like bringing out the, the cream you're like Mm, is this um is this normal i was like excuse us excuse us um you get a little bit of soured milk here uh you know she's like okay like i mean no, not at all you know they're never not apologetic it's just yeah, like, no complimentary coffee first off they didn't serve oh. cold brew or iced coffee so i had to ask for black and then a cup of ice anyway i digress describe to me first off i show up like an hour late well, you guys were an hour late, but we knew that. So we'd already eaten two breakfasts prior. So we, because it was really lunchtime. So we, we knew we were going to have to like, just, we, we ate ahead of time. Right. So it was great because I brought Schman, you brought Schmiggy. It was, it was awesome to see those two bro out, you know? Um, and I, I just love like that. watching significant others interact. Oh, I do too. I love that. Especially when they're, well, they're both into sports, so it's not too hard. You know, it's one thing if a guy is just, like, not into a certain thing that right. every guy, a lot of guys are into. So they, they bonded over that. It was easy. But we, we we just love to gossip, so we get together, and they're, like, going through the roster, like, okay, who are you going to talk about now? We don't she talk badly about anybody. Podcast, and he goes, do we have to speak? Do we have to talk about these people on our lunch <laughs> date together? Do we, do we have to? And we were like, yeah, this is, like, what we live for. He's like, I don't want to spend my brunch talking about these people for, <laughs> like, why not? Like this is uh, this is what we talk about. This is the this is what we planned on doing. Oh, yeah. here's a picture of us. We did get to sit outside. That was nice under a nice umbrella. Yeah, it was a little it was. brisk. It was kind of brisk. You suited up nicely. I had a t-shirt on. I was freezing the whole time. Well, I had just attended a soccer game prior to this where right. I was horribly, uh, you know, not dressed correctly. I did not have my Lululemon gear on. You know, mm, of course, I was wearing thick jeans and thick socks, which is just totally embarrassing. Yeah, why were you wearing that? You're supposed to be the hot soccer mom coach. And here you are bundled up like you're in Antarctica. <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, I look like I just come out of, came out of a Cabela store. Like, I mean, <laughs> that's what I'm going to come out with. Like myself and Holly Holmes mom. Like we're going to come out with a turkey hunting line. Like, yeah, thick socks. I had thick ass socks on. I was freezing. It was like 60 degrees. Meanwhile, everybody just looks cute at these youth soccer games. No one fucking dresses for the weather. I'm like... How do you parents do it? They all, but what they do is they dress cute and then they wrap themselves in all these blankets, all these fleece blankets. So yes. the fit still is cute. I thought, oh, I'm gonna wear these thick ass jeans so I can prevent myself from being cold and I don't have to have the blanket on. Wrong, wrong. Wh Way like, to make Schman look great. Yeah, they were like, come sit over here. <laughs> like, yeah, well, yeah. You got to sit with your team. All this stuff. Anyway, of course. So. I finally get there after an hour late. And mind you, this is so far. You know, I don't leave the city if uh, unwarranted. Like, I, I, I'll i go to Tyson's Corner once every now and then. But look, I get out there. We pass two tolls, Sarah, as if we're going into the city of New York. Why are there two tolls going out to Herndon? What? I, like, I don't think you guys had, you, I don't think you were prepared, right, for the tolls. So you were gathering change and everything to, like, get to pay the tolls. Another thing. Who only accepts coins? There's no teller because we're in the middle of a pandemic. All of a sudden, it says no cash, only coins. I was like, okay, this better cost 50 cents. 375? 375 to go to Herndon? Really? It's almost as though Herndon ought to pay you to come out there. I mean, hey, you. Why, the, why am I paying you guys? I was pissed. I was beyond pissed. And I don't have Easy Pass, okay? Because I drive a city car and I don't need to leave the city a lot. So, no, I don't have Easy Pass, okay? Most of the time, they can't even tell what my, my um, little plate says anyways like i build the thing okay 375 i pass another toll a dollar 25 by this time i am clean out of co of coins okay my change purse it's not it's empty okay i've got nothing my purse now weighs two pounds it used to weigh 50 pounds but i've lost all the coins and it was all the metal and i just have nothing left to my name see we cleaned you out lightened it a little you Before did that. thank you so much well it was awesome to finally see you in real life it was great to, to catch up it, it was, was incredible to see the boys and um i know i know and hopefully we can do it again here in the next couple of months um all right let's bring on dr clark he is awesome enough to be with us from act on addiction um you have been hearing us talk about act on addiction now.org the website very honored to be partnering with them because um you know addiction has touched my own family my brother has been on this podcast and talked about his own sobriety journey he's nine years sober and so i love giving family members coworkers. Maybe it's a parent in your life. I love to give people hope because sobriety is the most amazing gift, but it is such a challenge for so many people. So let's bring in Dr. Clark from the organization. Oh, uh, I'll let Alyssa. Alyssa is our producer. Alyssa, do that. Okay. Dr. Clark, how are you? 
I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good. It's good to see you again. Yeah, same here. We're love having you back. And, you know, obviously this is a very serious topic and, and uh, you know, we're just grateful that you're giving people this information. We're doing our best. It's a tough time. It is a tough time. So talk to us, you know, we've, we've been familiarizing. And of course, we partnered with you last year with Act on Addiction. So our audience is familiar with what Act on Addiction does. But talk to me a little bit about we are in such crazy times with this pandemic. How is this impacting substance use disorder? I'm imagining things are a lot worse now. Is that right or wrong? It, no, you're absolutely right. And I think um, people are getting hit from all sides. Uh, as they have had to retreat from life um, and work and remain at home because of COVID, now they're confronting a number of stresses in their personal life that perhaps they had been managing better or avoiding. Substance use goes up. As COVID starts to relax uh, the restrictions on our lives, now we have to go back to work and the other outside relationships that we've been able to avoid or perhaps put on hold, substance use goes up. So I think people are just under a tremendous amount of stress right now um, as the world churns forward. And as a result, uh, they turn to substances. Yeah. What are what are some of the signs, by the way? You know, it seems very obvious to us. And when my brother certainly was drinking, it was it was very obvious. But sometimes people are often blindsided that their loved one has an addiction or is so deep into addiction. Can you tell us a few warning signs that might be happening for people now through COVID that might be red flags for family members or if you're going through it personally? Right. I, I think that Part of the difficulty in noticing these problems is that substance use is sanctioned, in some cases legal, and a very much a part of people's social life. Um, that's not a judgment, that's just an observation. Um, as a result, as people's use begins to change, it's a little bit like that frog in the pot that's slowly getting warmer and warmer and warmer and suddenly there's a disaster. Uh, I think that when you see people's life begin to revolve around the substance and its use, that's a sign. Uh, if people are using more or focusing on using and it is ever present in their daily life, that's a big red flag. I think also if you see your, your loved one or yourself changing in ways that stand out as different or perhaps uh, negative, irritability, sadness, crying, um, not being able to fulfill their responsibilities. Yeah. That's a time to step in and say, I think something's wrong here. Um, by the way, for anyone just joining us too, we're speaking with Dr. Clark from Act on Addiction. Act on Addiction um, offers a lot of free resources for those going through substance use disorder or for family members. Um, it also works to destigmatize de the, the judgment around it. If you have a question, you can drop it in the live chat right now and we'll get to that question. Um, but talk to me about the stigma around addiction. I think it's lessening as we go on, because people are talking about it, talking about mental health more. But what do you all see? Well, I think that just for the same reasons that we mentioned that it's sometimes hard to notice an addiction as it blossoms, uh, there is less stigma around having a substance use disorder. Uh, people are much more familiar uh, with the substances, with the consequences of addiction, and there's been just a tremendous amount of press around the opioid epidemic. Uh, so I think that folks recognize that this is not a moral failing. It's a disorder um, with a number of different societal, familial, genetic elements yeah. to it. And so now I think where we are is that people recognize there's a problem. They want to get help for it, but they don't really know where to go. And they don't really know how to do that. Um, the healthcare system in general is hard to access and confusing to people. If you now layer in the issue of trying to get care for a substance use disorder, um, it, it becomes a whole other layer of complexity. Um, and the person's sick, so they need help navigating that 
process. I, what's so amazing about what you guys do is the amount of free resources, because the other thing I think that is overwhelming for families, if, if your loved one needs to be in a treatment facility, I mean, the cost is insane. Insane. I mean, people mortgage their homes, use their, it is so much to try to get your loved one help. So with Act on Addiction, the entire month of September, you all are offering free Zoom classes family member, someone that is, that is struggling with an addiction. But can you tell us a little bit, what else do you offer when people go to actonaddictionnow.org? Yeah, so it's important um, for people to understand the problem. Um, so there is just that basic education. There are also um, coping skills and strategies by which to engage a family member and to bring up this topic in a supportive and, and non-judgmental way. There is information about different programs and the types of programs so that people can begin to think about um, being a better consumer, essentially. Uh, mm -hmm. What do I really need for the problem that I or my loved one has? Do I really need to be an inpatient or not? Um, do I need to go out of the area or are there resources right here that can help me? Right. Um, what do you suggest to, you know, I don't know, when it comes to certainly with my brother, you know, it was pretty obvious pretty quickly how his addiction was escalating and maybe out of anger or I don't know, I didn't really know what to do, but you know, I would constantly confront him and I'd be like, and I'd call my mom and be like, we have to confront him. And I ended up taking him to his first AA meeting. And I always say the beauty of AA is lots of times when you're ready and you walk in, the person speaking is telling your story, which is yeah. like, it's crazy. So what do you, um, what do you recommend? Are you supposed to confront your loved ones? <laughs> Cause I do, but I see in my own family, cousins, second cousins who clearly have an addiction issue and nobody wants to say anything. And I think that's crazy, but what do you recommend? You're the pro. Yeah. Well, I, I think that it's confrontation with a smile. Uh, and I think that people do become frustrated and end up being perhaps too, um, strong in their confrontation because they're worried, they're concerned, they're waiting for the person to recognize or ask for help and that doesn't happen. And so the, the lid blows off the pot. Um, I think it's much better to, to say to people, you know, I, I've known you for a long time. I care about you deeply. I see this change in you and it seems to be centered around alcohol or drugs or prescription medications. Can you talk to me about what's going on? Can you tell me how you're feeling about this? Can you tell me how I can be of help to you in a time that must be difficult for you? That certainly sounds like a better delivery than what I would do. <laughs> You know, but yeah, you do love the person and, you know, you feel like you see something and it, and it's addicted. I think the hardest part about addiction is ultimately it doesn't work unless the person is ready. And that is really hard to watch. And that's why I love Act on Addiction, because you guys give um, you know, you give resources to family members because it's hard, hard, hard to watch somebody you care so much about go through. Okay. It, it's it, you need you need so much support. You, you really do. And I think that, you know, you touched on a very important point about the readiness for treatment. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a fine line between the person being ready and how you can facilitate that readiness to change. And that is really the sole principle within motivational interviewing, where you talk to somebody about, look at where you are, can you imagine wanting it to be different? You don't have to know how to get there. You just have to tell me, I'd like my life to be different. And if you can say that, then I think we can facilitate helping you to figure out how to make those changes and modify our support to be more targeted. Oh, I love it. I, I love it. I just, you know, like I said, I, the best thing my brother ever says to me is now nine years sober is like, he always says, I never imagined my life could be this good sober. And I'm like, oh, it just, it always like makes me emotional. Cause I'm like, I want that for other people, you know, it's, it's you know, cause you, when you're in it so much, you think that you can't have fun or you can't be social without alcohol or cocaine or whatever it is. And you're like, oh my God, you know, to hear somebody sober say that it's just such a gift when people can have that. 
No, it really is. And I'm, I'm tremendously glad that your brother is doing so well. That's a real testament to him and, uh, and the whole family. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, look, like I said, I, I want it so badly for other people because I know and, and I, I have family members that still are battling it and some want to talk about it and others don't. Um, well, Dr. Clark, we could I could talk to you forever. I feel like this subject is fascinating. And, you know, I always think if it resonates with one person today, it's like we've done our job. So Absolutely. where can people act on addiction now dot org is the website. But you're offering these wonderful Zoom courses the entire month of September. Tell me more about that. Yeah, so there are a series of webinars that cover a whole range of topics. Um, they are going on as we speak, um, but uh, also will be archived and so can be played at any time. Uh, so people should just go to the website, actonaddictionnow.org, and the whole menu of opportunities is there for them. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for joining us again. And, and just the work you do is amazing, amazing, amazing. And it's life changing when it all clicks. So yeah. thank, well, thank you. you very much for having me and uh, keep up the good work guys. It's nice to see you. Always good. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dr. Clark. We'll see you. Right. Uh, and you guys, as we mentioned, act on addiction now.org is the website. I just, I love that. Um, all right, Andrea, we'll switch gears again. If there's one thing we do really well on this show, it's we can go from talking about addiction to talking about sex. You You're know? the best at it. The, <laughs> the best. Okay. So I want to know your, all right. What do you think about this? I got an email from a guy who writes, I'm a 28 year old virgin and I'd like some advice, Sarah. He says, I have a micro penis. This will not shock you. One inch hard, AJ. No, no. Yes. yes he That's says surprising. He says, women have seen it over the years and been turned off, never called me again, never wanted to go out on a date. I'm beginning Ugh. to think this is probably the reason that I'm a 28-year-old virgin. My question is, what do you think about me just posting a picture of myself naked and erect right from the start? So if a woman isn't interested, she won't waste my time, or maybe there'll be somebody out there that is interested in me and wants to get to know me. What do you think of this idea? It oh. might shock a few. What? I don't think that you should put a picture up because you're going to get sued. No one asked to see anything. You know, they weren't ready for that. Put it in your bio. Put it in your bio. Say proud owner of a micro penis. Some women are into it. Some women are into it. Okay, see, I think you're right. I don't think there's any, because Alyssa, the producer, and we were talking about this. I don't think there's any website where you can post like a nude photo. You know what I mean? They're not going to allow you. Yeah. On Grinder for men, you can do locked naked photos. And I'm not sure how you get access. I think the person has to give you access or whatever. Okay. I love this idea of leading with a micro penis, either in the bio. Yes. I think that you should own it because then you are giving warning. You're kind of making a joke of it. And of course, you know, he says, P.S., do you mind if I send you a photo? Which, you know, I'm the dick spurt. Oh, of course. I have so many photos to get through in my inbox. I, I am curious about this, though, because I find it hard to believe that you're only one inch erect. Like, that's that. Th so what, what is it? Right. So it's it's it doesn't grow at all. It's got to be one inch. That's also strong. not hard. No, I know. So what is it not hard? A quarter of an inch. How does it even shrink that small? That's impressive. <laughs> There's so much you could do. Dan there is. Says, Schman thinks we should do a micro penis dating game where the men stand are, are behind a curtain that we ask a series of questions. Yes. And but you already know ahead of time that the men have micro schweens and you pick the micro schween candidate. How epic would that be? Amazing. I mean, coming I don't know soon. how you're going to do it. COVID coming soon to a screen near you. <laughs> this is why he needs to put it in his bio because people will then ask you, they'll be interested and then they'll ask you and then you can send them a picture. <sighs> There's our two cents. Uh, you guys, uh, as always, we love you. Thank you for listening to the show. Share the show with someone who has never heard of us. You can follow on social media. It's at the Sarah Frazier show across all platforms. At Andrea doing? Lopez comedy. Follow me. Guys, we'll be back tomorrow. I'm so excited about tomorrow's show, by the way. Relationship expert Roya Mattis is talking to independent, successful Sarah Fraser show listeners who she's counseling them on why they can't find love. And this is one of my favorite episodes. AJ, the shit that she advises, like I actually was sweating. I was like, oh my God, I don't know if I could ever do this. The women are doing this and they're getting dates. It's crazy. Is it like, okay? I can't wait to listen, but tell me like a little bit of snip, a, a sneak okay. peek. Is it is it putting it in your dating profile or what? So everybody is on. Um, everyone does Bumble. Everyone does Bumble, right? Okay. 
apparently on Bumble, like you, um, you can start messaging the guy, I guess. Yes. The women messages first. Women message first, right? Before you hear from them. Anyway, she suggests this series of that because you should want, you want to hear their voice, like that you have more of an emotional connection with someone when you hear their voice instead of over text. And there's less questioning what they mean. So she suggests from the start, sending him a voice message. And if he texts back, you go, hey, you know what? I'd really love to like hear your voice. Anyway, all this shit that I would never do, right? The women have been doing this and they say that they are getting responses and that the men love it. Really? You know what? I've been using voice message with you a lot just because I love to hear your voice and it's so true. She says you should not text on dating apps. You should use a voice message because then you can interpret better what what they're saying. You get a sense of if you like their voice. And then she says you should escalate to video chat before you ever like do a Zoom or anything to just see like, do you guys have chemistry before you even go out with them anything? A voice tells so much. It really does. And she says it tells a lot about the man if the man will not voice message you. Right. Yep. Which is true, right? Like if he, and I think about that man, I gave him my card. He emailed me. We texted a little bit, but then he called and like a lot of men, have, they don't want to call. So she's like, no, force, force like a voice conversation from the start. And it's going to save you so much time. And the women say it's working, right? I never I'm speechless. That. I would have never thought you would have, you would have gotten so many men by sending a voice message, Sarah, because your Hi. voice is so magnanimous. Hi, it's Sarah Frazier. <laughs> It's magnanimous. Oh my God. Okay. It's magnanimous. <laughs> What's wrong with that word? Mag- no, it's just Paul. It's Paul's favorite word. Remember? He'd always say, <laughs> My father told me one advice be magnanimous, sweetie. Be ma-. And it's like, when in the hell are you magnanimous? <laughs> What? Is that between between when you're cooking your um your frittata or um after you go get your uh suits tailor made? Is this between when you've told everybody off and do you know who I am? Is it when does the magnetic part come in, sweetie? Sweetie, what? Do you know who that I am? <laughs> exactly right. No, that that word will always make me think of him. I, I it's a great word, but it's just with him. It's like polar opposite of what he is. Yet it's magnanimous, so magnanimous. sweetie. Be magnanimous. But who are you referring to? Because oh my God. <laughs> Who's this? Who's this? All right. I'm telling you, tomorrow the breakdown is crazy. Crazy. So that'll be on tomorrow's show. All right. Love you guys. We'll see you then. Bye, everybody.